Hello, my name is Itai Rabinowitz. I'm from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem in Israel, and I'm a neurobiologist. I'm interested in how neural circuits, the connections between different neurons in the brain, the structure of these connections, inform the function of these neural circuits and how animals behave in certain ways because of the specific configurations of their neural circuits. Now, I'm doing this work using the tiny nematode worm C. elegans. C. elegans is just one millimeter in length. It lives in the soil. And the attractive thing about it for me is that it has a very simple, relatively simple nervous system consisting of only several hundred neurons. This makes its neural circuits relatively uh, tractable, something we can perhaps figure out. And we, can f we, we know how all these neurons in the C. elegans neural circuits are connected. We have a map of connectivity and this gives us like a very basic idea of or, or, or at least a starting point for our, for understanding how such neural circuits generate behavior or serve to control behavior in worms. Now specifically something that I'm very interested in is the question of what happens if we from the outside change connections within a given C. elegans neural circuit. For example if we can add new a new synaptic connection between these two nodes here between these two neurons in the neural circuit can we modify a given behavior can we maybe create a new behavior in worms and in a sense this could be considered as endowing some kind of intelligence into this animal why am i saying this because we're in, we're incorporating an element of human design into the organization of this system and what it actually does. We're changing the way it performs things according to our plans. Now, uh, this is not just conceptual, we're actually doing this in the lab. So we have developed uh, techniques for, insert, for genetically adding new connections in the circuits and we are able to do this. We can actually add and modify and edit the neural circuits of a living C. elegans and we, de we indeed see that we can change behavior in predictable ways. We, if we want worms to do a certain new thing, we can cause that just by changing the way neural circuits in these worms are connected. Now, what I want to do in ICA4 is actually expand the conceptual aspects of this idea of perhaps, if you may, an animal form of an AI system. Now, this idea stems from, from a very more, much more general idea of synthetic biology within biology, which is a kind of attempt uh, to create new forms of life, either, either single-celled or populations of cells or plants, or in this case, animals, where human intervention or human design or human planning changes the organization of how these uh, systems, biological systems, function and operate and in this way, again, it can be argued that we are uh, inserting or integrating some kind of external, extrinsic intelligence into these systems. Now, specifically, what I would like to do at ICA4, one of the things I would like to do at ICA4, is try to specify such a system of animal AI, a system uh, that we can describe in terms of what it will do, what it would look like, and even its biological plausibility. And after we, we, we specify in a very detailed manner such an animal AI system, it would be very important to do some kind of analysis of the risks and opportunities of such a system, how it could be incorporated in other forms of AI, in other forms of living, etc. So all in all, I really hope in ICA4, to gain more insights and understanding what intelligence means, what artificial intelligence means, and what does it mean for an animal AI system to exist and do things.